This is the first episode of Terraria that I'm going to do. I uh, decided to start playing Terraria again for I don't know why, what reason. But, um, you know, it's an old game, but still pretty fun to play. And I'm mostly going to be just showing the boss battles and other interesting things that happen. It's a fairly long game. And um, I didn't record the first few. Um, this is on expert mode, by the way, which is where... I guess the monsters do more damage and stuff like that. So I didn't record the battles with the first three um, normal mode bosses, uh, but here this is the battle with the wall of flesh. And so I'm um, uh, just reviewing the potions that I've got. Uh, you know, mostly what's important there is the endurance potion and the life force potion. Uh, I didn't really know what to expect because I think I've only played on expert mode once before, so I didn't really recall uh, how tough the monsters were. Um, the weapons I've got for this fight are mainly the Phoenix Blaster, which is the number four slot, and the, um, the Lava Bow and Arrow. I forget what that's called. That's in the number five slot. This is the map of, of the world. Um, Prior to going into hard mode, I've already dug a lot of mine shafts, as you can see, because once I actually kill the wall of flesh, then that triggers hard mode and contaminates a lot of the world, and so these mine shafts help to contain that. And in hell here, I've built a, a railway cart, a railway track that goes all the way from one end to the other of the map. So. You know, I, I didn't know how much of this I would have to use, um, so <laughs> just in case, I built a really long one. I've got two summoned imp helpers. I don't even remember where I got the staff that lets me summon them. So there, I tried to throw the doll and went didn't go in the hole, so now it goes in the hole. So here comes the wall of flesh, finally. And the wall of flesh just progresses from the right side of the map or whichever side of the map you're closest to. And the Wall of Flesh has three health bars, uh, but it's all, it's all the same monster. There's just three points on it that are vulnerable. The three, the two eyes and then the mouth are both, or all three of those are vulnerable to getting damaged. The eye has less um, defense. So it's better to shoot the eye if you can, but sometimes the eye is not, um, like, there's not a clear path. Already it's over half dead, so it seems like my preparation is overkill here. using these demon sides just to try to clear out some of those little mouths. And the, those, uh, those worms as well. They're just annoying. Now the wall is moving faster than I can run, but that's because it's almost dead. Now I'm just going to clear out this little lava slime and get my loot. And so right away, that monster that spawned, that's a hard mode monster. And it does a lot of damage, so I'm being kind of careful with it, because right at the beginning of hard mode is one of the most dangerous times, since you, your gear is terrible for hard mode, but the monsters don't care. They're, they're going full, so you get the pwn hammer, a demon heart, which I've never used. Oh no, the demon heart, that's right, you use it to increase the number of equipment slots, so you just use that once right away. 
And then this emblem, I put it on there just because I didn't have anything else to, to go there yet. And then clear away this little box so that next time I fight it, there's a clear path. And so that's the end of this fight. And But now, like I say, the world has transitioned into hard mode. And so what I've got to do now is try to get my gear to be as good as possible, as quickly as possible, before I get killed by the monsters, who are now much stronger. The first order of business is I actually have to kill some demon altars in order to cause the hard mode ores to spawn because until then you can't even get the gear that you need so uh, go over to a demon altar and do that but before to do that i looked at the map and realized that i got kind of unlucky with where the corruption went on the left side you can see where the hallow went but it got trapped by the existing corruption and on the right is all the new corruption, and it actually came to the surface right by my base. You know, it kind of goes in a line from the center of the map. So before I um, go kill any demon altars, I need to prevent my base from being overrun by the corruption. And so my first step is going to be to try to increase the separation to between my area and the corruption to three blocks, because the corruption can't cross a chasm of three blocks and then after that I have to go clear uh, the corruption from you know that little structure that I built on the right that was where I I fought uh, the eye of Cthulhu so little detour um, but then I'll go get the uh, demon altars however even these seemingly simple maintenance tasks can be very dangerous because again all the enemies are balanced for having some kind of reasonable hard mode gear, and I don't. I just have the stuff that I had at the end of normal. So, like this herpling, you know, it it does a massive amount of damage and takes a lot of, uh, of hits to kill. So, you know, in any one of those, it's only like two or three hits to kill me. So each one I have to, you know, be pretty careful with. I bought some uh, purification powder, I guess, from the Dryad. I forget what it's called. So my initial idea was to just try to push some of this stuff um, to clear it out, push it back a little bit from my base before I really build a, uh, a good seal just so I can get on with uh, killing those demon altars. With these... These monsters aren't making it easy. So that was one hit that did a quarter, took a quarter of my health. So now I'm finally heading over to the original corruption areas, or crimson areas, I keep calling them corruption, where there's a, a whole bunch of demon altars and the basic plan is to kill nine of them. Uh, the way it works is each one you kill gives you some more hard mode ore of a particular kind, and there's three kinds. The first one gives you the first kind, the second gives you the second kind. Uh, I initially had the wrong weapon selected, so the demon altar just does a bunch of damage when you try it with the wrong weapon. And now I've got these herplings all over me again. Um, so I'll kill, you know, the first one will give me the first kind, the second will give me the second, the third gives me the third, and then it cycles around again. However, each time you destroy a demon altar, it also puts one block of either crimson or hallow someplace in the world. And it's just random uh, where it goes. And as a result, then you've got one or the other outside of any containment that you might have already set up. So, in addition to the mine shafts that I've built serving to contain the existing uh, crimson, they also allow me to see where the new crimson shows up when it does. And uh, once I killed all nine of those, I just teleported away because 
It also spawns uh, those Night Wraith enemies, which are really difficult to, to beat, and they don't drop anything interesting, so uh, I just chose to run away. And so now I'm going to grab my Spellunker potions, which I uh, stocked up on before killing the Wall of Flesh, and then the basic idea is one at a time traverse the each of these mine shafts with the spelunker active so that I can spot the the new ores. And up here at the top, these are all those the pre-existing uh, normal mode ores, but that one, the, the darker orange, is palladium. I got a little bit unlucky in that each of the, for each of the three kinds of ores, there's two possibilities. Like, you can either get palladium or cobalt, I think, and then the next level is orichalcum or mithril, and the third is adamantite or titanium and so what I ended up with is palladium or a calcum and adamantite you can see these hard mode enemies are already kicking my ass and down to half health before healing and all three of the ones that uh, spawned are red <laughs> in color so as I'm looking around you know trying to tell what's what um, they all look similar to each other and they look similar to copper and iron. So it's actually somewhat challenging. It took me a while to to get to the point where I could, you know, recognize which one was which. And so this is more palladium. Uh, so palladium is the weakest of the three hard mode ores, but I'm going for it because it's the only one that you can mine with the pickaxe that you have at the beginning of hard mode, which is the, the molten pickaxe. These enemies are so annoying because they go through walls so you can't even see them approaching. They do tons of damage like everything does. And then even once you get them in a good position to attack them, they keep disappearing then behind, you know, back into the wall where you can't hit them. So you have to like just sit there patiently shooting the wall until you can kill them. And for each of these ores, um, I'm trying to collect... All I really care about is collecting enough to make a, a new pickaxe so that I can mine the next tier up, and also a set of armor so that I can have a little bit more defense. Because that's, that's really the race here, is to get enough defense that you can survive getting attacked by the hard mode monsters. And what that another thing that guy dropped is the soul of night, um, souls of night and souls of light, are uh, dropped by enemies in the underground versions of Hollow and Crimson, and used to craft a variety of important things. So to go back and get my shine potion as well so that I didn't have to keep worrying about not being able to see. It's just too easy to get ambushed, especially by the monsters that can go through the walls. So there on the right, that darkest red I think is orichalcum, and then the red that's coming up is also orichalcum, but I can't mine that stuff net yet because I don't have the right pickaxe. intersecting a spider web cave like this one you've got to be extra cautious because the 
spiders, you know, again, I keep saying it, but everything does so much damage, and the spiders are probably the thing that do the most damage of all the non-boss enemies. Spider at the bottom of that mine shaft crawling around. The spiders spawn off screen whenever you're near one of their lairs. So you have to be cautious about going down here. See, so the, the spiders actually shoot some kind of a projectile, so you can't even just do what I was trying to do shoot them from a, a, a too wide hole. So I think what I decided to do was go back to the top of the shaft just so that the monsters would despawn so I could make it past where I just was safely. Hmm. Right, so here I, I guess I have enough palladium to get the palladium pickaxe, which is very much worth doing because it speeds the, the, the mining rate. I don't think I have enough palladium to get a uh, any armor, so I'm not going to bother yet because until you can get a full set of armor, it's not worth it because you lose your set bonus. The palladium pickaxe that I got has the annoying modifier, meaning it does less damage, but that only affects when you use it as a weapon. It has no effect when you're using it just to mine the bricks. So here I guess I switched to a different mine shaft. Not sure why. Those turtles are extremely dangerous as well. Careful about that turtle. It does something like 200 damage if it hits you. And yet, since I have the Palladium pickaxe, I can go after Orichalcum now. So there in the message at the bottom it says the air is getting colder around you and that means that one of the hard mode bosses, mechanical bosses, is going to spawn if I go to the surface. I don't want to fight the hard mode bosses yet, I don't have any hard mode gear. So I'm going to make sure that I stay underground. Um, here, I'm trying to rescue this wizard. He's almost dead. Mm. 
he sells the crystal ball, which makes the spells more powerful temporarily. And at this point, even if he dies, he'll respawn because I've rescued him. And that's out of Mantite, so I can't mine it with this pickaxe. So now I've collected enough palladium that I can make the suit of armor for that. And I also have enough orichalcum that I should be able to make the pickaxe. And for each of these uh, hard mode or armors, you have a choice of helmets. Um, the helmet I always pick is the one with the highest defense, because I think defense is the most important statistic. The other choices give you more offense in certain categories. So there I've boosted my overall defense up to 54, and then the set bonus is uh, higher health regeneration. So now I have enough Oracalcum that I can make the anvil. And once I place the anvil, I can then make the corresponding pickaxe. And I just sell off the old anvil, I don't need it. Using that Oracalcum pickaxe, I can now quickly mine additional Oracalcum for the purpose of making it suit of armor and also go after the Adamantite. And those ice monsters down there um, have a random chance of freezing you solid, and when you're frozen, you can't fight back at all. So these guys are actually quite capable of essentially one shotting you. See how with the Oracalcum pickaxe the mining goes way faster. These tunnel or mine shafts all originally had torches going the whole length, but then the water, if you're not careful with when you're mining and you end up allowing water to flow down through the mine shaft, it knocks down all the torches, so you end up having to put them back go of that. A little heart graphic there on my armor is just the, the regeneration effect. question mark that appears above the enemies is an effect caused by the shield of Cthulhu, which is a drop when you kill the eye of Cthulhu on expert mode, and it makes the enemies temporarily 
move in the wrong direction. Like they would normally try to move toward you. When they have that question mark thing, they'll try to move away from you. It's not super useful, but in certain situations it can be good for the enemies to sort of prevent them from swarming you too badly. I'm surprised that turtle didn't do more damage. And so I think this is the first um, adamantite I'm able to mine in this game. Rune Wizard can be very dangerous because he shoots projectiles quickly. Uh, even more dangerous is the... Um, I don't even know what those things are called, but they shoot a projectile that decreases your defense. So the first one will do like 100 damage on its own, but then the next one does 200 damage because you don't have any defense. And so it, you know, three shots is... Uh, is often enough to die. So as soon as I get hit by those, um, I basically have to teleport back to base. And in the older versions of this game, the main way of getting back to base was to use the magic mirror. But the magic mirror and it is still in the game, but it operates very slowly. It takes you know over a second, I think, between when you activate it and when you actually teleport out. And in almost every case, when I'm trying to get back, I need to get back immediately because I'm about to die. So these teleportation potions that were introduced recently, of course, are consumable. So you have to worry about running out of them. But they teleport in about a quarter of a second, I'd say. Um, and so they're much better for emergency use. What I was going to say about the Rune Wizard is in that case I got lucky because he spawned right next to me where I could easily attack him and kill him. Uh, frequently he'll spawn someplace where I can't easily get to him, but his projectiles go through the walls, in which case I have to often just run away. And now I have enough orichalcum that I can get the orichalcum armor. And this has the set bonus effect that when you get hit, um, it will, like, the armor will cause some projectiles to spawn off screen that then hit the enemies.
one of the sometimes tricky bits is mining near lava. Here I'm greedy and I want to get all the adamantite because it's uh, not very common, even after having broken a total of nine of those demon altars. Um, but of course, if I let the lava down on top of me, then I do a lot of damage. So what I usually do in this situation is add an extra layer there to seal it, and then you can mine that you know, last layer safely. Those treasure chests that attack you are called Mimics, and the Mimics can drop a number of things, but the one that's by far the most important is a particular necklace that increases the immunity time after taking damage, because if you're getting swarmed, it, it doubles the immunity time and so effectively cuts in half the DPS that the enemies can do to you. Um, so I, I go after each one that I find, if I can, uh, but that one gave me the dual hook instead, which uh, I don't like. This enemy above me is a Medusa, and I'm not sure exactly how it works, but I think if you're looking at it when it does that snarling attack, it can turn you into stone. And now I'm being chased by a Crimson Mimic, which is a much stronger version of the, the Mimic enemy. And it can go through walls, it does massive amounts of damage. You know, I'm, I'm trying to attack it as I fly up, but it's hardly doing anything. And when it hits me, it does it takes a quarter of, of my health. I think this is the first time I fought this type of enemy before. And I'm trying to take advantage of the fact that I can grapple to my uh, railway up above. I didn't mean to fall down this hole. Yeah, and in the end I just decided I, I didn't know how to beat it. It was too dangerous to try to do so down there. And now I've finally collected enough adamantite that uh, I guess I already got the pickaxe and now I can finally get the armor. Just gotta make the pants. And with that, the defense is now up to 74, which is finally something survivable in hard mode. Certainly not the best armor yet, but uh, the first major plateau reached. It's now conceivable to actually hang around and fight against some of these enemies that I was previously running away from. And then this uh, repeater is what I'm going to use to try to fight the uh, the hard bowed mechanical bosses. So this is also giving me what I need to actually start those fights, which I will do in a subsequent episode. Uh, so that's the end of this one. And thanks for watching.